Welcome back friends! In the previous tutorial, we took a look at the XP command server and its ability to safely provide global access to an object's functionality. In this tutorial, we'll cover the object that the entire game is instanced from, the module class. But before we dive straight into the details, I've got some news. I hope your month has been as productive as mine. I've uploaded the second update to my game project over on Patreon. Patrons at the developer tier and above can download this project and take it for a spin, the very same project seen here in these tutorials. This month's update is all about the game menu, and here's a bit of a preview. When running around the field, press tab to enter the game menu. The knowledge tree is where players go to improve their character stats and abilities. Knowledge points, earned from battle experience, can be spent to activate knowledge orbs that increase character stats and grant fancy abilities. As one would expect from an inventory menu, this is the place players come to view and use the items they've acquired. I've populated the inventories with a few items to play around with. Since you have access to the project, you could make your own items, if you were so inclined. It's not so difficult, but if anyone figured out how to add custom items to the game, I'd be pretty impressed. When exploring the game world, or from winning battles, players will come across special accessories that can be equipped. The Equip menu can be used to view these objects and the effects that they possess, and of course, equip and unequip them on characters. The Synthesis menu is the newest addition since the last tutorial. Players can synthesize new, more powerful items from base items, as well as place customized effects on equipable objects. You can try it out for yourself, but don't forget to unlock the necessary skills in the knowledge tree though, or you won't be able to synthesize anything interesting. In the next month's update, I'll be tackling the battle system, so onward to battle. If you're up for following this little adventure, your first task is to click the link below. Alright then, on to the main event. Let's talk about modules. The module class might be the second most important script in the game after the XP command server, because the entire game is instanced from it. The splash screen, loading screen, game menu, construct field, and battlefield are each instances of modules. So what are the properties of modules that make them right for my game, and maybe yours too? Well, only one module can be active at a time. In this way, the collection of modules that make up the entire game works a lot like a state machine. When the splash screen module is displayed, the loading screen remains hidden. Or when the player is in the game menu upgrading equipment, the player's avatar isn't allowed to run around the game world behind the menu UI. Yet, we can't just stay on the splash screen forever. We need the ability to change which module is currently active. Any module can gracefully transition between any other module. Requests to transition between one module to another are made via the XP command server. When a module receives a transition request, it has the opportunity to cleanly shut itself down before allowing another module to take over. Likewise, when a module is requested to become active, it has an opportunity to wake up before taking center stage. Transitioning modules are also aware of the modules they are being transitioned to or from. This means that they can change the way they shut down and start up, depending on where they're transitioning to or from. Modules in my game also have another great responsibility. When a module loads into memory, it also loads all of the game assets it requires to run into memory via the XP asset server. I'll be talking more about the asset server in a later video. We can't afford to have assets loading into memory in the background just whenever they feel like it, or the game might come to an unexpected pause. Loading assets into memory is strictly controlled by modules. Each module is assigned a load list. Load lists are resources that associate a unique asset ID used in the asset server with a file path to an asset living in the Godot project. 
Load lists can be easily curated in the Godot editor via my custom plugin. When a module builds itself for the first time, it loads everything from the load list into memory via the asset server. In this way, assets never get loaded into memory at inconvenient times. Modules also have the ability to load other modules as children in the scene tree. In fact, all of the game's modules are loaded as a hierarchy in Godot's scene tree. When the game starts, the very first node to enter the tree is the main module. The main module's only job is to start the tree of modules. Systems are also loaded and maintained as children of modules. Systems are the functional components of my game. The dialogue player is an example of a system. A few more examples include inventories, databases, the background music player, player avatar, game camera, party characters, and the battle engine. Finally, since each module is a unique class that inherits from the base module class, it is able to have its own scripted logic and node tree nodes. Therefore, each module is able to expertly handle its own specific job. Let's take a look at the actual module structure of my project. The main module is the root module. Its singular goal in life is to jumpstart the XP environment module. In turn, the environment module loads all of the modules required to start the application. After this point, no other modules will load until the player starts a new game or loads a save file. The XP environment handles much of the lower level functions of the application. It manages systems including the application configuration settings, localization and language settings, keyboard and controller I.O. mapping, and the save and load systems. Up to this point, the application is independent of any specific game. It could load any game as long as the game is made of modules. When a player starts a new game or loads a save file, the XP environment module loads the XP world module. The XP world module is the root of an actual game. It, in turn, loads all of the submodules that make up the game and the assets and systems required for it to run. Perhaps the most important module loaded into an XP world is the construct module. This is the module that manages the game world that the player avatar moves through and explores. The construct module has the ability to load and unload special kinds of modules called zones. Each zone is a chunk of the 3D world the player can explore. As the player moves through the game world, zones are loaded and unloaded gracefully by the construct module. The game menu module is exactly as it sounds. It displays the root menu when the players press the menu button and also loads and maintains its submenus as submodules. The game menu is really important because quite a bit of the game's logic resides here. Upgrading character skills, equipping and unequipping accessories, synthesizing and using items, and saving the game are all done through the game menu and its submodules. The battlefield module is like a mini construct module. When players encounter a battle, they get whisked away into this subspace and put their skills to the test. I think these are the most important modules of note. There are many other smaller modules, like the after battle experience and loot menu, or the shop menu. And of course, since this game is still a massive work in progress, there are modules I just haven't even made yet. In the next tutorial, we'll take a closer look at the XP asset server, and we'll see how it manages to conjure objects anywhere in the game from seemingly thin air, items, enemies, equipment, UI widgets, all assets must pass through the gates of the asset server before entering the realm of the game world. If you don't want to miss it, make sure you're subscribed to be notified when the next tutorial comes out. If there is an aspect of the game project you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. All are welcome, even if it's just to say hello. I hope to see you at the next tutorial. Until then, happy debbing!